Numerical Computation, Chapter 6, Video Number 2. We will now go through a brief review of some concepts from linear algebra. First, we consider a square matrix A, and we denote its element by A i j in the corresponding position i j. And the matrix A is called strictly diagonal dominant if the following holds. So as the term diagonal dominant indicates, the diagonal element in the matrix A are dominating in the following sense. That is, if you look at the absolute value of the diagonal element AII, where the index are the same, that will be the element on the diagonal, this one is bigger than the sum of all the rest in the same row or column adding up in absolute value. Okay, So if it's strictly bigger than that, and this is called strictly diagonal dominant, and if you shall have bigger than or equal to here, then it's just called diagonal dominant. So some nice properties of the matrix A, which is diagonal dominant, is the following. So A is regular. What does that mean? Um, that means it's non-singular and it's invertible, which means A inverse exists and is unique, which further implies the system AX equals to B has a unique solution. Furthermore, the system AX equals to B can be solved by Gaussian elimination without pivoting. So just the naive version that we talked about would work. One such example that we um, came across that is um, diagonal dominant was the system arising from the computation of natural cubic spline. If we, were, if we recall that, so in order to compute all the zi's in the end, we end up with a tridiagonal system where the diagonal is really big, so diagonal dominant. So this type of um, matrix does appear in many applications, and it's a very desirable property to have. Next, we talk a little bit about norms, a norm for a vector and a norm for a matrix. So what is this norm? A norm is a mathematical term. It's some functional that you design to measure the size of the thing you are describing, for example, the vector or the matrix. So, for some definition to qualify as a norm, it must satisfy the following properties. So, let the triple straight line around x denote the norm of x. So, first, the norm of x will be always non-negative. So, it's bigger than or equal to zero, where the equal sign would hold if and only if your x is a zero element. Okay, so for example, if it's a vector, then x contains all the zeros as its entries. And second, if you multiply x by an a, where a is a, a scalar number, it's a constant, then the norm of it is the norm of x multiplied by the absolute value of a. And number three is the famous triangle inequality. Say you have another vector, y, and then x plus y measured in the norm shall be less than the x norm plus the y norm. This says the distance between two points is the shortest if you connect it in a straight line. So we'll give um, three typical examples of vector norms. Let's say x is a vector of length n and real numbers. And the first one is called the L1 norm. It's the little l. It's a discrete norm. You can also call it just one norm. That is, um, you take all the entrants and take their absolute value and add them all up. So this is a way of measuring how big the vector x is. Next is the L2 norm, or the 2 norm. So before you um, add them up, you take square of each entry, xi, and then you sum them all up, 
and then after that you take square root. So in the Cartesian coordinate, think of two-dimensional or three-dimensional space, and x denote the position of a point, this norm actually gives you the distance of that point from the origin. It's basically the Pythagoras theorem. Finally, the L infinity norm, or the infinity norm, is defined as following. You look at the absolute value of each entry, and uh, you find out which one is the largest, and that becomes a norm. And that's a way for you to measure the size of the vector x. Also, there are um, many other definitions of vector norms, and these are the typical ones. And later we'll see that um, matrix norms are defined in terms of vector norms. This comes in the next video.